Follies opened in the Winter Garden Theater on Broadway on April 4th, 1971, to a less than fantastic run. The second musical that sprung from composer-lyricist Stephen Sondheim's 11-year partnership with director-producer Hal Prince, Follies was plagued with the same criticism that haunts Sondheim's career to this day. His content is too dark or too cynical. His songs are unhumble, and his shows often end somewhere on the scale from conflicted to tragic. Sondheim had had success as a lyricist in the past, penning the words to well-known tunes of shows like West Side Story and Gypsy, but those tunes weren't his. Tried and true industry giants like Leonard Bernstein and Jules Stein composed the music in question, and for someone who ultimately wanted to be a composer, as Sondheim did, that must have been frustrating. The ultimately solid career choice to start out as a lyricist had been the advice of Oscar Hammerstein II, who wrote the lyrics for some of the most successful and well-remembered musicals in theater history. The Sound of Music, Oklahoma, South Pacific, The King and I. He had arguably helped invent the Broadway musical as we know it with Showboat. Hammerstein was a family friend and Sondheim's mentor. Although famous for the optimistic romantic comedies he had created as one half of Rodgers and Hammerstein, he also encouraged his young protege not to mimic his shows, as Sondheim obviously had a different world view, and, quote, audiences wouldn't be fooled by false sentimentality. It seems that Sondheim took this advice to heart, producing musicals that deal with the worst parts of relationships bitterness and loss and falling out of love. Although Sondheim's complex scores and flawed human characters earn him positive attention from critics, Broadway did and still does have a hard time selling his shows. Follies in particular was destined to push the envelope from the start. After all, a musical about the death of the musical is at best ballsy and at worst a recipe for disaster. Set in a dilapidated theater on the brink of being knocked down and paved over, the show takes place over the course of a reunion, where estranged friends and former lovers mingle, stirring up old baggage, abandoned dreams, and the regrets of the people who once performed there. The book by James Goldman is little more than a framing device, as for the most part, Sondheim's music carries the plot and the show as two couples in crumbling marriages, Sally and Buddy Plummer and Phyllis and Benjamin Stone, reflect on their collective past in the theater. Meanwhile, all around them retired performers relive their glory days, bittersweet and haunted by the ghostly doubles of their younger selves. Follies is a concept musical, featuring interludes of various secondary characters performing their old numbers for the audience, and the mostly unseen ghosts of the theater's past sometimes echoing or interacting with the main cast's songs. As the show goes into its second act, however, songs become less and less integrated, and characters begin to directly address and interact with the ghosts until until the the Loveland sequence. The continuity of the show has already begun to crumble at this point, with past and present versions of characters freely interacting, when the fourth wall is shattered and the theater is suddenly rejuvenated. Showgirls stream on stage and Loveland is performed in full spectacle, as it would have been in the theater's golden years. Loveland represents the sense of nostalgia for the purity of youth on which the show pivots. A nostalgia which shows a past that we, the audience, have by now surmised is a false one. The cast's idealized memory of what their youth was like is as authentic as the performance we see before us. It looks good, but has very little substance. The main characters are absorbed until the revelry, and then they perform vaudeville acts that illustrate their conflict in the play. In addition to these fourth wall shattering devices, what is most distinctly conceptual in the show is its overarching metaphor. 
It's not just about the collapse of this theater, but of theater in general. The show is a conversation with the previous generation of musicals and the people who wrote them. Sondheim's Follies is valuable to study both as an example of a concept musical and as a conversation between generations of musical lyricists and storytellers, showing shifts in attitudes and priorities over time. Sondheim changed musical theater, just as his predecessors did. The rise of the concept musical and the new culture of cynicism left the utopian happy ending promises of Hammerstein's shows ringing empty. Not only is Follies an ambitious concept musical, its very nature prevents it from being consumed in a vacuum. It is best read as a response to its time and a discourse with Sondheim's predecessors and the industry he worked in. Follies was not a commercial success at first, and like many of Sondheim's shows, its songs were never pop or radio hits. The most singable tunes are parodies, sometimes direct parodies of Sondheim's predecessors as, fitting with the theme of nostalgia, most of the music in Follies is a pastiche, or imitation of an older style. This, however, didn't save them from going the way of most of his songs, having no life outside their original context. His lyrics, however, are at their best clever and incisive. I'm just beginning. What? Leave you? Leave you? How could I leave you? What would I do on my own? Putting thoughts of you aside in the south of France. Would I think of suicide? Darling, shall we dance? Could I live through the pain on a terrace in Spain? Would it pass? It would pass. Could I bury my rage with a boy half your age in the grass? Bet your ass. But I've done that all In the same song where Sondheim rhymes you aside with suicide, he ends with the piercing, could I leave you? Yes. Will I leave you? Guess. Follies also features several examples of the list song, the talky, word-dense form which Sondheim leans on. Often the tunes are intentionally, strangely paced, meaning to stress the cadence or quality of the actor's speaking voice rather than their singing. You're either a poet, or you're a lover, or you're the famous Benjamin Stone. You take one road, you try one door, there isn't time for any more. One's life consists of either or. One has regrets, which one forgets. And as the years go on... There's also a breadth of styles in the show. The God Why Don't You Love Me Blues is a patter song referencing the comedic vaudeville acts that were popular in the 1920s. While The Mature and Weary I'm Still Here is a classic George Gershwin-inspired ballad. According to Smith, quote, conventional wisdom for three decades had it that Sondheim's work wouldn't attract broad popular audience, end quote. Yet his work has continued to see revivals and often receive some more favorable reviews in revivals than they did in their original run. Quote, his lyrics are often so complex they have to be heard twice on the cast album after the show has closed, end quote. Corliss calls Sondheim, quote, the poet of domestic tragedy. Perhaps that is why, despite everything, audiences continue to come back to his shows, despite the lack of chart-topping tunes or happy endings. Sondheim did for the musical genre what Rodgers and Hammerstein did, to a new degree. While Rodgers and Hammerstein showed that musical theater could be human and genuinely emotional, more than just spectacle and farce, Sondheim eschewed their ultimate happy endings and chose instead to take musicals into the muddier and more difficult aspects of human emotion. At soft, here they come, those beautiful girls. That's what you've been waiting for. Fashioned a flower so fair, no rose can compare, nothing respond. 
respectable, half so delectable. 